right, Kalonzo Tosha, as you can see there, Ozon has depicted that he's going to be on that particular horse, or will he be? We can see also President William Ruto will be there. And behind is actually a mule. It seems Raila uh, Odinga will be on a mule as, it's, as it is right now. He'll not be on a horse. Yeah, so <laughs> we are yet to know <laughs> why he's on a mule. Uh, uh, is a donkey, uh, so so to speak. But the question that actually we're looking at is uh, party politics and of course looking at uh, what is happening with Mount Kenya mm -hmm. and uh, the pronouncement for, uh, according to the Wiper Party, that uh, Kalonzo Misioka will be on the ballot in 2027. First of all, do you agree with the sentiments that are being also uh, presented by Honorable Mgatana? Mgatana. Honorable Kali. Th th thank you, Dibal. <coughs> you know, you know Dibal, one thing I like about democracy is that people have freedom to say what they want to say. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I, I, re, I really respect what Mokatana is saying, because it's his personal opinion. But uh, Dibao, I've listened to both Senator Mokatana and Senator Matinga, and I'm really surprised uh, whether they live in this country. Because Dibao is just last Monday when we were with you here, and we were discussing the current government got a score of D according from to Kenyans. Raila. According to Raila. Now, when, when you get a score of D, Dibao, and you say, this president is very strong. Mm -hmm. By the way, as yes, at now, the easiest person to beat at presidential level is uh, Dr. Ruto. He's the easiest to beat. Somebody who has a D, you just need to push him back to here and he disappears. <laughs> <laughs> so, from what you are saying, Dibao, you know, Dibao, if we want to be objective, and it's good to be objective, because we are talking to Kenyans. Uh, Kenya Kwanzaa government, as some they call the plan. The plan is a manifesto. If you look at their manifesto and what they have uh, promised, mm -hmm. the reason why they are getting D is because they have literally achieved very little out of the manifesto, which they gave to Kenyans. Mm -hmm. And Kenyans these days are very smart. They're able to analyze and look at, you promised us this, what have you delivered? I'm very, it's good that they are they're hoping that the next three plus years, you'll be able to change the, the current situation. But I'm telling you, if things don't change the way they are doing things, because I've said many times, this government is full of talking. They talk so much, they do very little. And unless that changes, I'm telling you, uh, Mugatana, you can forget about 2027. 2027 can, can never be won. And that's what we are saying. It can never be won. It can never be won with this kind of scenario, unless they change things, I'm telling you. You don't know how they're happy that the rains were in their favor. Go the goats came down Milk to their out. side. Uh -huh. They got enough rains. Uh, now the, the external factors are working for them in terms of the f uh, f price of uh, oil products, the barriers coming down. But I'm telling you, if you look at the input, what the government is doing to make sure that now they do that. And I've said many times, the Baha have said in this show many times that we can't be relying on the grace of God so that we're always praying that let the rains come. We want to come up with a very clear program. See, you look at their plan. It was very clear that they were going to irrigate a number of acres. Irrigation, not, not rainfall. Irrigation. Mm -hmm. Have they done it? Nothing. Mm -hmm. So it means if by that's, chance that's, this year we don't get that's enough not rain. Correct. And I can tell you, if, if, if you look at the sack, if you look at the sack of rains, I can correct. tell you the high chance is not 2024, we will not get enough rains. So you, you see us going back to the uh, price of uh, 200 plus again. No, no. Now, let's look at, uh, you know, the issue of Kalonzo. And I think we discussed it the other time, although I don't need to do that. Now, let's look at it. Kalonzo uh, was a presidential candidate in 2007. He didn't win. That time is the time he became the deputy president, the vice president by then, because he didn't have deputy, but vice. Now, after that, three times he has allowed Honorable Raila to be the president and supported uh, Honorable Raila to be the presidential candidate. This time, even the last time actually, the last bit was where he even allowed, uh, always he has been the deputy president uh, candidate. But now this time he even allowed him to just to be out. He supported Raila and Mother Karua. Now, what he has said, and this has, has come out clear, is that now looking at the 2027 scenario, how many options does he have? And he said himself, that I don't have any option other to be a presidential candidate. Why? First of all, I've supported Raila four times. He has never won. So this time, it does not make even sense for me now to start support him again. Because you, you can't do things the same way and expect different results. 
So we need to change that, that mix to see whether we can get different results. If we are to change that automatically, it becomes a presidential candidate. That thing he said, which is critical, and I think that's what Mugara is overlooking when he says, you will never contest. Eng now, he says Eng is catching up with him. You celebrated the 70th birthday the other day, as the leader was celebrating the 79th. So by the next election, how old will he be? About 70, 74? Okay. Now, if he doesn't go for it at 74, it means 2032, you'll be attempting to go for it at age almost 80. Does it make sense? That's why he says he doesn't have much option. And I want to assure you, Deba, from where I'm seated, this is my deputy party leader, I want to tell you from where I'm seated, 2027, Carlos will be a presidential candidate. You can take that to the bank. And my prayer is that this, this scoring of D continues for the next four years. <laughs> uh, uh, let me say, just allow me to just okay, collect him on one thing. Kenyans can now do, if, because I'm being very objective. Uh, uh, I, you know, I'm a party member, I'm a white party uh, member, and a very loyal member. Uh, but I'm looking at things objectively, not because Carlos is my party leader. Objectively, I'm telling you, 2027, Ruto will be the easiest to beat if he's to uh, go as they are, ah. and Carlos will be the man to beat Ruto. Ah. <laughs> okay, let me just, uh, just a quick one. And then uh, we'll let me just add a yes. very quick one. I just want to collect um, Moshimua Kidogo. Yes. The dictates of economies, the law of supply and demand, will dictate that when supply is high, the prices will drop. Yes. Right now, with the good rainfalls, the supply of milk is very, very high. Yes. So we could have expected the prices to drop. But because of the prudent decisions that are being made by the president, the prices of milk are rising despite the increasing supply. That is and I would want to say, I would want to say, unless someone is very, very bright. But that's not entirely true. That's because that's when, 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 when you look is. at uh, the publications, they're saying the prices of milk are going down. And for the first no, time, no, no, for, no, for no, the first no, time. No, 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 no. During the drought, mm -hmm. when we had almost no supply of milk, we were selling, and I'm a farmer. We were selling our milk at 32 shillings. Some shillings. people were selling at 29 shillings. Right now, the price is 50 shillings. But that's not sustainable because the government giving it. No, 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 is no, no. You're saying you don't. No, know you see give. what's happening, Moshima. What's and that's why I say prudent decisions. What we've done is we bought pasteurizers, we bought freezers. This milk that we are she now was, harvesting, was, yeah. what we are going to do is we are going to, uh, to to make it into powder, store it. When, it's, when it comes to the dry season, we can export in the local African region the same same milk. All right. Uh, but, but in the same same uh, breath, uh, okay, just hold on to that. We'll come to milk. Yes. I don't want to lose that particular point of Cologne so that uh, uh, we are not uh, uh, having a mesh mash of, of issues. So just hold on to that because I'll come with a critical question, especially on the privatization yes. and uh, why also KCC uh, wants to be given, uh, is it 5 billion shillings? Uh, to, for, for modernization of KCC's yes. factories across the country. Mm. And yet you want to privatize KCC. Why then do you need that particular money? Just think about that, mm. then you'll answer that. But uh, up, over to you, the vice. Well, I, I you know, let me, let me. Of Wiper Party. Let me tell you uh, something. Uh, in in uh, 2002, we wanted Kalonzo to run for presidency. Basically, the reason why, if we, we were going to create some kind of an electoral college of the seven candidates or six candidates who are going to run for the president, because we, we had that coalition, Kibaki, Raila, uh, Saitoti, himself, a number of people. Then, of course, Raila came up with the Kibaki Tosha, which was uh, literally stabbing everybody in the back who was with him there, people who moved out of Kanu, moved out of the government of the day with him, and, and, and he was assured that you, you will be, you'll be the favorite candidate. Because in politics, you have somebody you love so much for his, for whatever reasons. He comes from your region, he's a good friend of yours, whatever reasons. And then you, you will want to see that person in the top position. If you can't get that, then you say, who do I hate most in that team? Then you do something to make sure that that person never rises to that opportunity opposition. Oh. You, you get my point. In politics, that's it. Who would be the worst, what do you call, nightmare for this country and for my community and my region? And he says, so, so and so is going to be the worst nightmare. So let's, let's put, do everything to make sure he doesn't come through. 
then you're able to deal with uh, things like that. So Raila uh, Calonzo stepped down in favor of Raila three times. 2013, uh, 2017. Initially, he ran for the deputy president, or rather he ran with his party ODMK because of the manner in which he was treated by Raila in Khadija grounds in Mombasa. Mombasa yes. uh, when, when everybody in, within the ODM was basically gearing up. I remember Orwa Ojode coming to Wingi and telling the Kambas, let's move out of this NAC government. Our next president is Kamazo Msioka. So they moved together. But finally, again, he was stopped in the back in Mombasa by, by Raila. So he decided, I'm going to run. Uh, uh, so, and that's how Raila lost a landslide victory that time, because it was Kenyans were against Kibaki and Kikuyu and the mountain region. He saved, literally, the day for, for, for Kibaki. Even with that, elections had to be contested. You remember, first the election violence and the rest of it. And became a deputy president, or vice president. The understanding was that once Kibaki is through with his term, he was going to support him in the mountain region. So Kalonzo knew that he would be the candidate for the mountain region in 2013 because he supported them in 2007. They changed it and they brought Uhuru into the field. So the only way to now counter that is to go to somebody he was never happy with, Raila, and, and, and say, okay, these people think that they can do what they want and stab us in the back. Let's watch what, what kind of a presidency we'll have with Raila. Of course, Raila won in the election of 2013, but many of us believe that he was rigged out. And the courts also more or less did what they did. And, and, and that also opportunity was lost. 2017, he had to again give in to that popular demand, now that we even have uh, Udabadi with us, this time it's going to be a massive landslide. It'll be going to be 70%. That never worked again. In 2017, we were adamant that no Kalonzo, no more, what do you call a, a, a coalition? What was our coalition called? NASA? What is it called? NASA. 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 And then still, people came with trailer. 2022, the same thing again. The last understanding was with or without victory, Kalonzo, you are the Kibaki, Kalonzo Tosha. I don't think that's going to happen because some of us believe that uh, some people are not in politics to become the president, but they're in politics because it's a business, it's, it's an enterprise. <laughs> and, and <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm they don't particularly intend to being president. Uh, yes. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's an enterprise. It's an enterprise. It's business. Yeah. So, so, uh, 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 the way I see it myself is that uh, already every time, I remember last time when Ruto was the deputy president, he went out of his way to support Uhuru and did all the good things for Uhuru. Mm -hmm. But at, at the end of it, they decided uh, Murade was going to be the one who would go and go make for that onslaught and say, we're not mm -hmm. going to hand over this country to a mm -hmm. thief. To a thief. Uh, now already Murade is saying, we can't hand over this country to, to Kalonzo Musioka. I think uh, uh, Raila should take another shot at it. Yes. <laughs> Are you getting my point? Now, if I were Kalonzo and I get stabbed in the back again a fourth time, what would I do? I make sure that you never get to that officer at all. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. not, not because uh, I'm going to run as a candidate at Kambas number three or whatever it is. Uh, because without that kind of a block, solid block, if Raila <laughs> runs and, and my friend uh, Kalonzo runs, <coughs> and then the incumbent has got also the advantage of the incumbency. It's a tall order. It's a very tall order, like I told you. The, the natural thing, in my opinion, would have been, okay, that's how you want it, yes. Let's see how you lose another fifth time again, and then I will link up with the other side. Because in politics, there is never permanent enemies, and there are never permanent friends, but there's a permanent interest that you can find in there. If you can find your interest in there, that's it. By the way, the last time, Ruto offered Kalonzo, the possibility of becoming, even after the matter went to court, if he was going to accept it, say, whatever comes out of the court, you, uh, you become the speaker for one of the houses. Actually, uh, Kingi was, 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 a, was, a, was a fallback position. And Kalonzo said, let's wait until the court determines this. Uh, you understand my point? 
So that in itself, say, if it's determined, that it's determined in my favor, why would I give you something? You get my point. Mm -hmm. So he is the, the, he is the most shrewd politician. You can go to war with him and be gladiators and you want to kill him, and tomorrow Ruta will come to you and tell my brother, let's come and work together. He has that ability and knack to reach out to everybody. So the way I see it myself is if Kalonzo, if uh, Kibaki, does, uh, Raila does not say, which is what is going to happen in my opinion, I can literally bet any amount of money on that, that Raila will be again a candidate in the next election. Uh, the most natural thing for Kalonzo is to see what other uh, grouping is he could, instead of just running and having an incumbent in there and having uh, this other big, what do you call, uh, coalition which has been dismembered and coming in third, you see whether you lose with one vote or you lose with 10 million votes, a loser is a loser. And I don't think, in my opinion, it would be a prudent thing. And as for uh, Ruto, I can tell you, and I'm saying this very objectively, and I'm looking by the way things are going, I think, you know, the ducks are lining up in his favor in a big way. If the economy keeps on moving the way it is right now, and farmers begin appreciating uh, things like the tea farmer, the coffee farmer, the milk farmer, and uh, we begin, you know, we are, we're already rationalizing the external debt because we never defaulted on external debt. Mm -hmm. And the and, and economy starts picking up on the dollar. The supply and demand. The dollar begin, begins losing against the shilling progressively. Then you have anybody who will stand up against him will have a serious toll order. And then he's, he's a positive maverick. I mean, he's um, working in an, an orthodox way. He's literally going out and stomping the country alone. Alone. He is building, he is going in the housing there, he is going into the four corners of the country. He is also dealing with powerful monsters in that, this country. Corruption is, 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 has been in this country as the, the biggest thing. Right now, uh, a, a few of us are uh, yeah, convinced that he really wants to tempt that corruption. And he really wants to do a lot of development projects that's going to change right. the, the thing. So he will, if, if, if he starts this early now, uh, uh, the chances are, and they begin looking good, chances are we'll get to the next election where the country is doing much better than right. it's doing today. Honorable and then it becomes difficult no. to beat an incumbent. I, I think yeah. it's honorable uh, Mugatana. Yeah. Yeah. Because Let me just finish one thing. But if Raila runs another fifth time, is it fifth time or fourth time? Or sixth time? If Raila sixth. runs, <laughs> I can assure you one thing. He will have no more than uh, uh, a certain fraction of blowing answer. Uh, you, people, you know there's a fatigue. Like I told you, I voted for him all these times. And I'm not going to give him a single vote in, 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 in my constituency come the next year. So there is a rail of fatigue in, uh, in, in, in the whole in country. Yanze. In the whole country. In the whole country. In the whole country, the whole country yeah. Well, according to you. No. It's, it's you there. don't have any scrap of evidence or. Any I, I, I'll tell you. <laughs> yeah, so you can't just say. Uh -huh. Watch it. Let him. You know, right now there's talk of him, him calling for demonstrations and the rest of it and all that. Just watch whatever he calls for as you progressively continue. You see, you also have a way of invalidating yourself in politics. Thank you. When you hang on to uh, uh, failed projects too often, you, 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 lose, you lose out. Thank you. Well, Hold on, Mungatana. When we're talking about even the borrowing uh, and uh, the debt defaulting that now wouldn't, wouldn't be there, but the government also is increasing that borrowing room to around 168 uh, billion shillings? Additional. Yes, additional. to wh Why then are you telling Kenyans that we're paring down on, on borrowing and yet you're doing the exact opposite? What really justifies let that? Me, let me tell you. Or maybe you can expound that a bit. Uh, yeah, let yeah. me tell you. Let me, I've understood your question. Let me tell you. There's borrowing and borrowing. There's borrowing and borrowing. There's borrowing and there's borrowing. Right now, we have huge development programs that uh, are lined up for execution, okay? If I'm borrowing as a government, not even to, to it, it, is, it is actually ring fenced for a project, a development project, that is different borrowing from the borrowing that is there to support, uh, you know, payment of salaries, budgetary support, let me say. What President Ruto is doing, let me tell you, every coin now we are going for is specific towards development projects. It's boosting our development capacities. And I, 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 I don't know how to put it, but uh, for those of you in the know, you know that IMF board is going to sit, I think this week, this week, this week, this week, this week, week to, to make its decision on Kenya. 
an indication sir, you see that they are going to approve yeah. any support that Kenya is looking for. Why? Because they have not been defaulting in any of the commitments they have, international obligations. So there's borrowing and borrowing. There's, there's, there's a debtor who would come to you as a banker and he's asking, all, he's asking for money. And there's another one who come for you, he's selling you, I want to buy a, another bus, I want to buy another, I want to increase my fleet, my lorries, because I have this contract, you know? That one, he, okay, he's borrowing, but it's different from the other guy who is telling you, you know, I have debts to pay, what, 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 uh, give me money or whatever, so that I can solve this as I solve this other one. Obviously, as a banker and as a responsible lender, you look at this other guy who is investment oriented with more favor than the other guy. And the kind of borrowing that is happening now, it is first of all well controlled, very well thought out, and it is going according to what IMF, World Bank, uh, African Development Bank wants. And they are actually implementing to the to the to the to the to the to the, to the dot what is being requested by the international organizations. Yes. And I'll tell you this, even this, we had a session uh, with the president. Even this supplementary budget, some of the reorganization that was happening was so that we can align ourselves and make sure we don't go outside accepted economic imperatives. And I'm telling you that our nation, going the way we are going, trying to manage the economy as we are trying to I think we are heading into good times. And also the, the numbers are looking good. You see, the, I, I have said it here before, last quarter, agriculture, it has done very well. The trade deficit has come down. The inflation has gone down from 6.9 to 6.6. .6. Now we are talking percent. And we are moving in the right direction. You see this lady, Christina Shusho, you know, when she came, she came to Kenya and sang this song. Shushanyav. I don't know if you heard about it, Dibali. Yeah. So I'm telling Kenyans, if you've been trying in the past and it's not working, this is the time the economy is picking up. Shushanyav Udena. I'm telling you things are going to go very nice. I'm asking and you. And let me, let me finish this point. Just was it yesterday, the day before, a very large cruise ship landed in Mombasa. Three, Over 2,000. Not 3,000. Uh, about 3,000, 3, if, you, if you add the crew. The Norwegian. Uh, the if you add ship. the crew. But mm. the tourists themselves were about 2,600 and something. Those who landed, and you know, you know, people here in maybe Nairobi or whatever do not understand what the impact is for those of us who are in the coast. That's big, really, really big. And also we thank the country because Christmas, all the way to New Year, the bookings were maximum. Things are happening in this country. So people should shush nyavu again. <laughs> I'm telling you this economy is going nicely. So <laughs> when, and, and I am connecting this with the discussion of debt. When you have a, a, good, a good performer coming to ask for uh, support for development, it's not the same like a bad performer trying to ask for money to pay off debts. This is the difference between the earlier borrowings we had in the past administration and the current borrowing. And remember, we have accepted even, uh, you know, more scrutiny. So the difference is not really the, in the borrowing. The, uh, if the, I may just interject, because uh, I, I wanted just to know, you borrowing, said but, you're not borrowing yeah? anymore. Well, but but what was the bad thing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly yeah. Like so you, uh, yeah. Yeah. just a moment. So you're not even uh, shushering the nyavu on the question I'm asking yourself, yeah. that uh, the borrowing that you promised not to borrow. Yeah. Why would you do that by 168 no, million shillings? I think, yeah. I think yeah. that yeah. was yeah. Can I say something? Can, can, I, say, can, can I say something? Can, can I say something? Can I say something? Yeah. will come you to know, you. Know this, why I'm, this is what I'm saying, Dibao. Yeah. Yeah. Because he sits in the budget room. Because you know, you know, Dibao, if you look at the plan, and, and I, I would want the Mgadana or Matinga to look at their plan, the manifesto. And this was public. I, I think you have shown here, Dibao, you have actually, you have been able to, 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 show, to show us here, where they said, we are not going to borrow anymore. Irresponsible. Our work will be no, to reduce. Irresponsible borrowing. Irresponsible borrowing. Irresponsible borrowing. You know, will not this happen. is why we said it, Bar. Uh, 
And I'm sure I'm the bomb. Me, I want to tell you, I'm a, I'm a monitoring and evaluation specialist. This <laughs> government scored a green D objectively. <laughs> yeah, it has nothing to do with the one hour. Yeah, objectively. That's what I'm telling you. Please pick that D and work improving it. If they don't improve it, because the plan was very clear. We will never borrow more. Irresponsible. It was said by the president. It was said by the key campaigners. They said we will not borrow more. Irresponsible. Now, in one year, in one year, they have borrowed more than even water was being borrowed by by no, by by, by, by Not true. That's the thing. Not true. So we are saying, please keep your word. We'll, we'll mark your script on the basis of what you promised to do. To be fair enough, let, let me just give one more thing and then I'll come it, to it is, an, it is unfortunate that uh, Moshimua uh, is uh, deliberately misinforming Kenyans. No! We as parliamentarians, and he knows that, we changed the law so that the, the borrowing ceiling, the debt ceiling, is not pegged on, an, on a figure, but it's pegged GDP. on GDP. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Which is a moving target. Right. So thank you very much. Uh, Why it is a moving target, Dibal, it's because any country in this world, for you to be able to achieve your investments, what you call the, the real investments in terms of development, you must use dynamics that are times outside the economy. Countries like Japan are known to have borrowed over 200 and something percent over their GDP. What are you talking about when you fix an absolute number and say we are going to borrow 10 trillion? Then you may not be able to grow with those dynamics the GDP. Correct. What we are saying is, let's mm -hmm. tag a figure on the GDP. Mm -hmm. The higher the figure, the higher the borrowing. Yeah. Once we become lower, then the lower the borrowing. Yeah. I mark you. There is what Senator Mugatana explained, borrowing to finance a recurrent expenditure. Yeah. The Kenya Council government has even changed the approach. The bill, uh, the water bill, bulk water bill, is on the floor of the house. Why? We want to make water commodity a tradable commodity so that an investor Instead of us borrowing money to finance a water infrastructure company, they can team up with private investors, be it you or me, and say we are going to develop the infrastructure and then sell this commodity for the next 20 years to the people, like we are doing with power through the PPPs. And I think the only way to achieve the plan, because we are not able to raise those resources within our government through revenue collection, is to come up with a new thinking mechanism. And I want to thank the president for this. Because the, the new approach of having public-private partnership, even in the irrigation sector, and that answers your question, what are we going to do after the rainfalls? I'll tell you there are 100 mega dams. The, the bulk water act is before the house. Once we change that and we're making water a tradable commodity, somebody who has the capital, be it a Kenyan, be it a foreigner, will come and invest on a mega dam and then install a master meter and then cash in on that the way we do with electricity, the way we do with, with roads, the way we do with almost everything. But, but what what we're saying is we're changing the paradigm. This is a paradigm shift. We're changing the way of thinking. Okay. You ask the question of privatization. I could be found yeah, that. We will come to privatization because also you raise a number of issues here that we need also to tackle in the first place. First, when we're talking about the water being a terrible commodity in this country, uh, first of all, we should get ourselves from the United Nations listing that we are a water scarce country. That's exactly yeah. what we are going to do. Yeah, yeah. First Through of all, you should be, that should be your dance. passport, of course. Yes. Secondly, when you talk about the GDP, and it's been raised that that is not a true reflection of a matrix mm -hmm. to measure the economy of a country. And a consummate economist will tell you here that what you should go for is the G coefficient, right? That gives, because many people here, we talk about, oh, our growth of a GDP to six uh, to seven percentile growth. But it's not a true reflection of what is happening in our pockets. So people wonder, how come we've grown well, as a uh, country well, and then, it's not reflecting on our table? Because at the end of the day, even if you have a 10% uh, projection of a GDP, as long as I cannot buy a loaf of bread in the house, it doesn't make any lick of sense to me. Well, thank you very much yes. because that's a, good, that's a good argument and it's valid. There are other indexes that could measure the development of a country, including countries like Bhutan that uses the, the, the GDP, the Gross Happiness Index to measure uh, what, how their people are feeling. Though all those are factors, but we know that the variables that goes into the measuring of GDP are internationally accepted. The distribution, only distribution, because what the GDP, GDP does not do, it does not measure how much money is concentrated in each and every uh, person. It measures the per capita of the whole country. But, Matthew, there are those what you'd call common user utility and services. 
once the country has a higher GDP, you take an example like the United States, which enjoys a very, very, uh, quite a big uh, GDP, but you go to, to Harlem, you go to Brooklyn, in the slums, there are people who don't get loaves of bread. That does not mean that their GDP is not good. What you're talking about, uh, Debal, is we must look at, as we are looking to grow the GDP, as we are looking at now getting water to become a tradable commodity, which must also look at the redistribution of resources. And that brings it to point, the point home. The president, in his wisdom, realized that unless we come up with a new mechanism of making sure that water is, uh, get, is, is, is enough for everybody, that we have, unless on the line from lane-fed irrigation, that we must go to irrigation-fed, uh, then but we'll but come then, and address the issue I, of distribution. Yeah, right. it's, it's, and those it, are factors yeah. that comes into GDP and distribution of wealth. Maybe right. the father can help me as he answers. Just a simple question. He, it would be unfair for him. You, you will yeah, yeah, I want you to, to, to help okay. answer that because it's I think okay. he, I'm okay. 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 The okay. thing is, did this government promise not to borrow more? Is it yes or no? Is that because what is given is the explanations? Is yes, it's responsible it's borrowing. Correct. No. Uh, responsible uh, borrowing. This responsible the argument was to irresponsibly. Be. Thank you. Correct. If you borrow from the multilaterals, if you borrow from the World Bank, from the IMF, from the African Development Bank, these, the one, the interest is very nominal. Very little. Very nominal, very little. Negotiable. Negotiable. And then you have a moratorium. Correct. You have a moratorium. You don't have to pay maybe for the next 10 years, 15 years, I don't know, but you have a moratorium. I don't know what we have negotiated ourselves now. And then you put that kind of money in serious infrastructural yes, development. development. The multiply effect is good, and by the time it matures, you've already done very well. So that borrowing for site things is universal. There's no country that does not borrow, and borrow all the time. Uh, but you have to not go to uh, commercial banks, you know what I mean? Yes. Which when you go did. to commercial banks, the whole idea is that so that some of it goes, ends up in the pockets of people Correct. to line up, and then you say, let the country worry about it. And that's what we went into. The reckless borrowing we had over the last 10 years of Uhuru yeah. was one of stealing it, literally. This thing was never get, finding out itself into and even you know, in the treasury everywhere it's not coming. everywhere so if this borrowing right now, and i want to believe that it's very prudent you know responsible borrowing in the sense that the world bank would never allow that but right now the world bank and imf are you know working the, along with the government and, and increasingly in a manner that in my opinion if properly invested in all these uh, mega infrastructural developments we will see the multiply effect in a big way and, and so I, I, I tend to think I have that knack and, and you know, at the back of my mind that may, we're, doing, we, we're not doing as bad as uh, we all feared we're going to do. Uh, and, and let's watch it for the next three, four months and then five, six months. By the time we get to June, I'm sure we will see uh, how much has changed in, in terms of all this uh, infrastructure, the money, the, 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 the movement, the business coming back. You know, initially there was a flight of uh, a capital out of yes. the country, and that's what informed the disproportionate, you know, uh, uh, relationship dollar. between the Kenya shilling and the dollar itself. Yeah. But if the dollar starts now, the shilling starts picking ag against the dollar, picking up against the dollar over this period of time, and increasingly, it happened to us, by the way, when uh, Kibaki came first to to yeah. office, we had uh, a sad one. That's when the treasury bonds were going for as much as yields of 78 percent. And the boy is last a uh, few years because he was not in good terms with the uh, the donor community. Uh, but we, oh, no, no, sorry, before Kibaki came in, uh, but, and uh, Madavadi was that time the Minister for Finance and did a fantastic job, I can tell you, fantastic job. So we, as uh, as soon as this began now changing and the country was beginning to see light at the end of the tunnel, and we 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 deregularized uh, the foreign exchange markets in the country, or rather regulated it to free it. And then our shillings started picking against the, the dollar. From 80 shillings, we ended up coming all the way down to 40 shillings. And, and that's, that's the time when then we decided that, look, our exports are going to be too expensive for the importers. So the central bank had again to uh, uh, release a lot of dollars into the market because of the supply and demand to pick it up and you know, stagnate at around 60, 62%, 65 And that's when Kibaki came to power. Kibaki came to power. So this shilling, this wayward, crazy shilling going up and down against the dollar is not something that's due to us now. It's happened before. But if we start now, uh, shilling starts picking against the dollar, then you're saying prudent, uh, responsible, uh, what do you call uh, 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 economic policies are being done by the government today. And central bank and treasury are both doing their job very well. 
and, and you, you, you follow that one with massive infrastructural developments out there which will have a multiplier effect, then you are safe. The, but we'll see all these things in the next couple of months. There's something I want to agree with you, well. Eh? And the, the, one thing, the one thing that essentially I also <coughs> see a lot of sense in him is that the, over a period of time, particularly the last 10 years, serious formations of cartels, cooks, in every sector of the country, particularly the judiciary, by the way, let me tell you one thing. We know it is a lawyer, and, and, and I know myself. We'll also. We, I'll be remiss if we don't talk about it, of course. Let uh, Mugatana finish, then we come to judiciary as well. There's something I wanted to agree yeah, about. To comment, there's a point yeah, you, want, you made, I wanted to agree with you. You know, there's the figures and the realities according to finance and financial reporting. And there's the fact that the, the, the monainchi wa kawaida still says, oh, my pocket is still hurting despite your good figures. And this I heard from none other than the Treasury boss of the US, Janet Yellen. The president of uh, United States, current president Biden, was going to give his speech to discuss how his campaign is going to be. Just the other day I was watching uh, him on uh, CNN and I saw, uh, now you know the way people come, the analysts and so on talking. And they brought the Treasury Secretary, Janet Yellen, to come and talk. And she said, you know, the labor has expanded. The, the interest rates have fallen. The, the, the fundamentals are looking good. The economy of the US is picking up. Uh, and so the analyst started saying, uh, no, but uh, you know, you are talking like that, but Americans are saying there's, there's very little in the pocket. And her answer was this, it will take time for the effects to, to reach down to everyone. So I wanted to agree with you that uh, still Kenyans are, are talking, okay, the pocket is still hurting. But the policies and the fundamentals that are there for now, they are looking good, including the continual drop uh, on, on fuel prices, uh, what Apra is telling us every month, it is now good news. The inflation rate coming down increased exports, the value of the trade deficit going down, stabilization of the dollar. Still, Kenyans will say, but, but my pocket is hurting. Over time, it is going to get better. That's why we're saying, uh, as a government, that we need to, to have a, 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 you know, a positive uh, outlook. Let's, let's go back to working hard, because things are changing. The fundamentals have shifted towards the positive, and now it will be a matter of time before they reach our pockets. That's right. the point. Arbo, Makali wanted to say something. Yeah, yeah. You know, the, what I wanted to say the, the topic to is uh, basically the, the issue of uh, borrowing. And I think uh, that's why you see I gave them time to comment because this is an area which I can, I can talk with the authority. The truth yes. of the matter is we are, we are borrowing more domestically. If you look at our medium term state strategy and if you look at our budget policy statement, Kenya is borrowing more locally as opposed to external borrowing. And that's why you see our interest rates are going very high. Mm -hmm. If you look at the current interest rates for a treasury bond or yes, a treasury so. bills or bond, mm -hmm. you see they are, they, are above, they are all around 17. 18 percent, actually. Yeah, they are yeah. above that. So anytime you see interest rates shooting up, mm -hmm. it means we are doing more local borrowing than external. And I remember the other time I was here, I, I did indicate that uh, if there was a way, it would be important that we start borrowing more out there so that we allow our local private sector to borrow locally. In that case, then you grow the economy. The other thing is, you hear the IMF is meeting, the board is meeting this week. Uh, IMF has currently has two facilities, what they call the extended fund facility and the extended credit facility. Basically, if you look at that money, that money must come to support budget. Not like what they are saying. It's not project specific, as they are saying. So what we are saying in simple terms, I wish what they are saying is what the government is doing. because. When they came to power, the promise that we were not going to borrow more. Yeah. Because they, they always the argument that time was Jubilee is borrowing, we were doing things which are not planned. And that was the argument that when we come, when we take over the government, we will not borrow as more as Jubilee. From all statistics, point to the point that this government is borrowing almost, if not at the same rate, higher than the rate Jubilee was borrowing. And that's why we are saying, really, for me, unless they change things, from where I sit as an economist now, mm -hmm. and, I, I, and I, I want to, uh, you know, you are an engineer. This is now my area. 
As an economist, I want to tell you from where, the outlook is not looking good. You, you better start working on the fundamentals. Yeah, and we, we, should, quick we should be preparing our headlines. Just a quick well. collection. Yes. We have not, the interest rate has not gone up because of the expenditure. The interest rates have gone up because we, had, we have been artificially holding the chilling against the dollar. Artificially means we've been spending up to two billion to just hold it where it was. The CS Treasury, in his wisdom, and I do agree with him, decided it is too expensive for a country to try and hold the shilling against the dollar artificially. Let's drop it. That's so what point. happened That's exchange is rate, not interest rate, exchange rate. Ex interest exchange rate, rate sorry, yeah. exchange rate. Yeah. So what say that let's drop the Kenyan shilling so that we do not have to spend the two billion every every now and then to to make to artificially hold a strong currency, let's drop it so that the laws of market, the law of demand and supply will stabilize. The interest rate, yes, has increased from the banks, but if you look at the opportunity cost that we were spending, how much we were spending to hold the shilling where it was artificially strong, it was even more expensive. So what um, Moshimo is saying as an economist, Yes, I do agree with him, but disagree that it is more expensive to hold a currency artificially. Just the same thing with fuel. We were using 480 billion every year to subsidize fuel. Subsidizing consumption is one of the most unprudent things to do in any economy. Now we've let the sub we've taken the subsidy off. We are saying instead of subsidizing consumption, let's subsidize the input. That's why we were able to remove the money from fuel, the 480 billion that were being catered by everybody, including those who do not drive, paying for it because it's paid through the taxes. And we're saying, let's go to the farmer, because if you are not a farmer, you're not going to take the fertilizer. And that's why you see now the cost of production is coming down. Thank How you. I wish that now the government would now take even a kind of a government-to-government -government arrangement to get the other farm inputs so that production can be managed, so that we would have Kenya competing with Tanzanian in terms of production of onions and other products. These are things that we in the plan are doing and delivering, and that is what Honorable Makaria doesn't want to admit. Thank you. This D, it's artificial because the variables that we are using to mark our scheme are not the same variables we are using to drive the economy. But using the, if we were to use the same scheme, APOS for APOS, then I think the government, it will not be getting an A, but it will be at C minus, which is a good thing. Right. We are winding up. I just want just to ask uh, briefly because we also don't have any time to go robustly into this. We are pinched for time. This week, I think beginning this week, we have uh, the legislators. Now we have uh, the housing levy uh, that uh, I think Parliament uh, will be seeking out public participation. participation. Yes. And uh, people are saying this is, is flying in the face of what the courts have actually determined so far as it is. The matter is in court. Why would you be going for a public participation? It's, it seems like you're putting the, the, the cart before the horse. That now we have a legislation yeah, which, which is debated or has been you know, uh, the injunction in, in Parliament. Yes. Now you're coming to the public to get our participation and our views. It, it, yeah. it is very convoluted, yeah. very top sitavi. Let, let me tell you this. That is a very uneducated, ill-informed, we call ourselves learned friends, unlearned judicial overreach. The judiciary has a right to <clears throat> to void a piece of legislation when it's brought before it. Piece of an act of parliament. Judiciary has no business control in the parliamentary business. Correct. Parliament is an independent body. It's the longer arm of the state. The, the second longer arm of the state next to it is the executive and the judiciary is the shortest arm. And judiciary cannot engage in what you call judicial activism. activism. You go for something called a judicial review, he's a lawyer. You, the judicial review is of an existing act of parliament. But to say that parliament is contemplating, discussing a bill, and we're going to shoot that down in the, in the, in the, in the courts, that judge should be out of the bank the following day. He has no knowledge of what law is about. These are the three independent arms of the government. This is judicial overreach. It's trying to legislate from the bench. But does that give you the temerity to just, uh, you know, slight what the courts have said and what they have, they have determined? Because even if it's null and void, and, they've aired, and even we've seen also this on the presidential challenge 
uh, if that were to happen, of, of, yeah, yes. he, he said, I accept what the court has decided, but I do not agree with the judgment, right? But you're going... You cannot judge on... What are you judging on? Yeah. Uh, listen listen to me. Go. I want you to understand these things. I know you're not a lawyer, but let me understand you. The courts have got the right to nullify a piece of legislation that is contrary to the Constitution. Where is the legislation? The matter is in Parliament. Let the Parliament do its own business. Exactly. Let them conclude. Let them finish. This is what the minute. court is asking you. How come then we have the housing no, Navy? The court and there was, not, no, there was the court, no legal framework. The court is not asking me. No, it's, no, no. It's but not the business. It, of, no, it is just pointing to the fact that this thing, the way it's been steamrolled, there are a lot of questions. That we have a housing Navy. It is not. And the there is no legal. There is no legal. I know you are a brilliant guy, but let me tell you what the Constitution is about and what laws are about. The courts are there to arbitrate on the constitutionality of an act of parliament. The courts are not there to manage and micromanage how parliament operates and that's its business. That's true. The courts will wait until the piece of legislation is done. It has a presidential assent. Somebody gets aggrieved. That person comes to court and says that, look, I'm aggrieved by this piece of legislation. And, it is, uh, and the court says, yeah, you have the remedy. It's unconstitutional and strikes it down. How do you interfere in the, you see, the independence of the legislature is unfettered. We need, we need to wind up. Hang on a minute. The independence of the legislature in doing its business is unfettered. The work of the judiciary is also there, but the matters have to be brought through to the judiciary because it's concluded. It's an act of parliament. You cannot, what do you call, nullify on constitutional basis an imagination. What, is the other, what are they nullifying right now? Oh, you want to create a law through a parliament? We are telling you that law is going to be unconstitutional. That's nonsense. Absolute nonsense. Thank and you. If there was an internal mechanism, all those guys would be out there in the streets looking for the small lawyers, what you call fees from other places. Yeah. Yeah. You Still a developing and, and, and There's something also, let me just explain to you. This has to do with the philosophy of law. There's what is called non justiciability -justici you cannot try and say that you will navigate. You see, every arm of the government keeps away as much as courts cannot deal with political matters. No. You wait until a matter is brought before your court. And sometimes you say that, look, no, we cannot deal with these things. A government is there to govern. That government has got the executive has the freedom. Thank you. Thank you, Father. No, no, you don't understand. You've not understood it. And I want it for the benefit of Kenyans to be educated on these things. Have you ever seen the American saying, oh, Reagan has come back with a very lousy, uh, what do you call economic policy, and the courts are shooting it down? No. no. It's the executive's role to govern, to commit resources, to decide on their, what do you call, development, what do you call, priorities. It's not for the courts to interfere with that. They can't interfere with the manner in which the executive runs. Let them bring 10 different taxes. It's their business. The courts cannot deal with that. Let the, the, the parliament legislate the way it wants. Only when it's brought to you, then you can say this piece of legislation is unconstitutional. Right. All right. Let you, up, yes. I wanted to give you an example. Eh? I was a lawyer for the case which we filed against BBI, uh, against an Arriba County Assembly. At that time, they had just passed their decision to support the BBI. But they had advertised that there will be public participation on Tuesday, and there was no public participation you know, on Thursday. Before Thursday reached, on Tuesday, Raila announced there will be Super Tuesday. So County uh, Assembly of Tanariva passed it. So you know, uh, before Thursday, where the public participation was supposed to happen, I ran to court. And when I went before, just, I think it was Justice Ergon, you know what he told me? Because uh, I told him, we want an order to stop the transmission of this decision to Nairobi uh, so that the, 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 the speakers of the National Assembly and the Senate do not receive this decision because it's a wrong decision. There was no public participation. You know what the judge told me? He told me you cannot interfere with the processes. Yes, absolutely. I told him, but you know, if this one comes, he say you cannot. What counsel you can do is wait is to wait because this court has immense powers to order even the reversal mm. of the effect of that decision. Okay, at the end we, we, we won the thing, but uh, the point he was making is a fundamental judicial Thank approach you. that you cannot interfere midway 
with the processes of parliament but you have to wait when the processes are over thank you then you take a decision thank you thank you uh, thank One you uh, your closing remarks uh, thank you very much without wanting to assume that i'm a legal expert i would want to say that what we need to do as a country to um, fight corruption we know that most people learn to courts and we know that some of these things are not done in normal way what i would say having also been a victim of judicial malpractice the same way uh, the deputy president was, where orders were imposed to lock my accounts, freeze my accounts, including my son's account, who was only 14 years old, only with 70,000 in an account. I say we must address these injustices that are melted out by the people who are supposed to protect Kenyans. And that is the judicial system. There's we must overhaul called it. judicial restraint. Thank There's you. Something called judicial restraint. Thank you, thank you. Right, we, 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 uh, let's hear from uh, Makali. Yeah, briefly, but, closing remarks. You know, the lawyers have spoken, and I, I, I agree with them. <laughs> Let's allow parliament go through their processes. Yes. Even Kenya, Asian Kenyan is aggrieved. After the process is done, then you go to court and you get. We have actually had a number of acts in parliament being nullified by, by the courts on the basis of that. But with my, my closing remarks, I think we've said many things. And as a country, we still need to give up to our people. Kenya Kwanza government is the one in government. They need to govern this country. So they have all the opportunity, they have all the resources. As, as an opposition, our work is just to point out areas where well, they think they're not doing well, so that we wake them up, so thank that you. they serve Kenyans. Right, Farah, your closing remarks? Continue doing that Ten very seconds. faithfully. Thank you, thank you. Yes. Your closing remarks? Yeah. Ten seconds. Well, my, my closing remarks is, uh, let's allow every arm of the government to function with its own mandate. And let them also become executives accountable to the people of Kenya five years. Every, they said what's called the right of return, recall. After every five years, they come up there and the people are the ones who are going to decide whether it was a, a prudent thing and a good thing to put up a road between Kar Muranga and Yeri or to put it between Gariza and Wajir. It's not for the judiciary. It's not for the legislature to decide such things. So this constant interference by the judiciary, which has, which has become another cartel, uh, frankly, and I, I'm, I'm sorry to say that, it is very bad. We must now go back to Parliament and legislate to have an internal mechanism, an internal mechanism for review of the of, of, of the kind of rulings that come out of Parliament. All right. Which, which are, by the way, which are you see a judge giving this ruling, another one gives a counter ruling, another one gives a counter ruling. Thank you. It's it's all a crazy thing. Thank you. It's, it's, Thank it's you, like Father. a mafia. Thank you. All right, it sounds to me like uh, the judiciary now is a black leg within the executive and the, all, all the arms of government, so they are on their own. Uh, if the legislators, they're sounding like this, and we have the executive as well on the same page, uh, judiciary, they are on their own as it, as it sounds. Thank you very much, nonetheless, for your valued company. We shall be continuing with this conversation next week. It's still a developing one. We'll see how also this public participation will roll out as far as the housing levy is concerned and uh, how also this part continue to, of course, widen the chasm between the judiciary and uh, the executive and what will be the latest development this week so far. Thank you very much for your valid